Yo, what is going on, family? I hope you guys are doing well. Listen, this is another edition of Let's Talk About It. And uh, man, I'm super excited to be hanging out with you guys today. I believe that today is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I think God is going to speak. He's going to move. Uh, I think he's going to do some wonderful things. And before we get started, as always, make sure that you tune in to BG TV. Make sure you're going live when we go live. Make sure you're tuning in to the YouTube. Make sure you share. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment because when you do those things, uh, it allows the uh, network to not only grow, uh, but it allows other people to get to know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to make sure that we're spreading the gospel. But today... Uh, today is going to be an absolutely exceptional day because last week I had a father on. I always tell people I have a wonderful father down in Auburn, uh, but I also have some men of God that the Lord has placed around me that are fathers to me. Last week I had a father to me, and this week uh, I have a father to me, and uh, I'm absolutely excited about it. And uh, you guys already know him. The world already know, knows him, and his name is Pastor Brad uh, Pastor G, if you will. What What's going on? Oh, man. How are you, brother? I'm good. How are this you? This is going to be one of my favorite episodes we've ever done. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, sometimes you just got to be led by the Spirit, jump on, and just see what God wants to do, man. But I'm yeah. excited that you asked me to come on here, man, because your show has been just touching a lot of lives. I know last week, watching you and Pastor Doug yeah. um, just talk about all that God was doing um, at Rebirth, but also in your lives. And yeah. um, it was really just powerful powerful man so thanks for having me on man i appreciate it i appreciate it i think this conversation is going to be really good because this is a conversation that me and you have had yeah. um just in my own life so you uh being a father to me and us just kind of talking about comparison that's what we're yeah. going to be talking about today and uh, i wanted you on because i wanted to talk about this live because i think a lot of people compare their lives um just to other people back in the day we used to call it keeping up with the joneses yeah keeping up with uh, the joneses and and a lot of times in our lives we look at other people's lives and then we look at our lives and we ask God the question why and the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because even in my own life I even had this recently somebody sent me something somebody texted me something uh concerning the field that I'm in uh and it just looked better it looked cool it yeah. looked great yeah uh what they were doing and 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 and, and some of the things that they were doing and I was like yo I instantly went into a depression <laughs> I was like I was like I this is this is right. not only top notch but I feel like when I compare myself uh to what they're doing and what I'm doing it's just not good enough and you have yeah. that comparison syndrome but even from there one of the things that I recognized that I started doing was like well God like they got more resources or this or that or this is not coming into play and yeah. you start making not even necessarily excuses but you just start saying all these different little right. things that are coming up and we all know, and this is what I want to hit on and ask you a question on, but uh, comparison is a thief. Yes. And so yes. I want to know in your life, not only has there been any moments of comparison, but what have you done in your life that has fought back uh, comparison? And did was there anything in your life that the Lord had to heal in order for that not to be there? Or is this something that you just have always dealt with or, wow. or, or will always deal Man, with? Man, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of people in the body of Christ, in ministry, leaders that deal with comparison, comparing themselves to other leaders, uh, other ministries, yeah. and all this thing. So, you know, one of the things that I try my hardest to keep on the forefront of my mind is um, that I'm I'm here to please God. Mm. So, you know, Galatians 1.10 says that, you know, you're, are you here to please man or are you here to please God? That's yeah. paraphrasing that verse. But yeah. it, if you go read it, it, it says, are you here to please God or are you here to please man? Yeah. So the back of my mind all the time, forefront of my mind, I try to keep it there, that I'm here to please the Lord. Um, and so that helps me to know, okay, well, what's my main goal? My main goal is just simply to be obedient to the Lord. I feel like that, um, I'd say about five or six, seven years ago, somewhere around there, um, Holy Spirit kind of gave me the definition of success. Because mm. I think one of the things we do, comparison, is that we're trying to succeed and we're looking at other people that we think are successful and yeah. we're comparing ourselves to them. Mm. So, but when the Holy Spirit whispered to me, He said, Brad, the definition of success is obeying God in every season. Mm or o obeying God in every decision. Mm. Like, that's the definition of success. Yeah. Because, see, what God's asking you to do 
is going to be totally different than what he's asking me to do. Yeah. So if you're comparing yourself to me, you're missing it. Mm. You ever heard that illustration of, um, you know, there's two walls and they both have two, a, a ladder on each wall. Yeah. And one of them is climbing to, to the where you're supposed to climb. When you get over that wall, it's supposed to, the promised land, everything's there. It's supposed yeah. to be there. But then there's this other wall that has a ladder and you, you know, which ladder are you going to climb? Yeah. You know, because if you're climbing the, the ladder of comparison, you're comparing, you're trying to climb the same ladder as somebody else's. When you get to the top of climbing somebody else's ladder, what's on the other side of that wall is not what you hoped mm. for and not what you wanted and definitely not what God created you for. Yeah. And so um, when I recognize that the definition of success is um, obeying God in every season, yeah, that helped me to not compare myself to others as much mm. because if I do, I'm, I'm, I'm not being obedient to God. I'm not pleasing God. And I'm definitely not going to be doing what God called me to do. Mm. Does that make sense? No, that that's, that's exceptional. And I think that one of the things that is so beautiful about that is that when you get off of that, you know, ladder of comparison, you can walk fully in your purpose and what yes. God has called you to do uh, and begin to do it. Now, when we think about this, I, I want to ask this because this is a thought of mine, and I think you could speak some life into it. So now it's about to get uh, not super personal, but it's just me and you yep, talking in, in the room. When you feel as though all right, I, I've compared myself, I've done that, I'm trying not to, but let's just say there's a particular thing. Let's just even say um, God asked you to do something. Oh, this is this is good. Okay. All right, I'm throwing right. something. I'm going to throw, throw a monkey, monkey throw wrench it. at you. Throw it. If because of your slow obedience or lack of obedience to do something and then somebody else takes the, the mm -hmm. reins of that, God mm -hmm. allows somebody else to take the reins of that, what should be, because in that moment you want to compare yourself again, like, oh, man, yeah. what should be the response mm -hmm. to disobedience or so slow first, obedience? Yeah, first of all, that res the, the first response should be, I mean, the way we always are, it should be repentance to the mm -hmm. Lord and and, you know, getting back to the Lord as quick as possible to be obedient to Him. But second of all, what, what drives a, a lot of us to compare is jealousy. Mm. Okay, so we're jealous of what someone else has. And so we start comparing ourselves to them, and we want what they have. Yeah. And I've done that, man. I mean, we all have. You yeah. know? Um, and let me tell you the best way that I've found to fight jealousy. Um, and so I'll just give you a story. So yeah. back in, let's say... Let's say 12 years ago, 15 years ago. I don't know. I was in ministry with a bunch of guys, and um, you know, when you're when you're running with some people, man, that are anointed and they're you see God moving in their lives, it's easy to get your eyes off of Jesus and mm. onto other people, mm. and you kind of um, forget about what you're doing it for, why you're doing it, why you're ministering to people, and you start thinking about yourself, yeah. putting your me focus. You know what I'm saying? And so I had a season there where I was me focused, and um, there was a particular friend of mine that man every time it, we, we started out we, we, in ministry, man, we were rocking, rolling, we loved each other, and yeah. we were just, um, you know, loved being around each other. But then there got to a season where it was like every time that he would walk in the room, I just felt this tension. Yeah, I just started feeling this tension in our relationship. And um, I could tell he felt it, and I felt it, and it was just got to a place where we didn't even really want to be around each other. Yeah, maybe get a little snippy towards each other, and you don't even really know why. It yeah. just started happening. Yeah. And so, uh, man, I I went up to him one day. I said, "Man, I don't know what's going on between us, but man, we gotta we we need to work this out. Man, let's go let's go to eat somewhere." So we went to lunch at Moe's Southwest. <laughs> Welcome to Moe's, and. Um, we went and sat down and we were like, man, let, let, let's figure out how to squash. And he was like, yeah, man, let's squash it. You know, like he was like, he wanted to, too. We, yeah. Neither one of us wanted the tension that was there, yeah. but it was there. So we confronted it. That was the first step as we confronted it and we talked about it. Um, so the person that I was comparing myself to, I went to them and said, hey, man, I'm just I'm comparing myself to you. I, I, I there's something here. There's tension in our relationship. You're a brother in Christ and that's not supposed to be. The Bible says, let's get along with everybody, you know. Yeah. So anyway, we went on for three or four weeks. And things were good, and then it, it started coming back again. Yeah. And so I remember it was a it was a New Year's Eve night. You know, you have the, we have the you have those big New Year's Eve night services, yeah, yeah, for right? Sure. Well, you know, the clock's cranking down, and I, you know, like, what are we, what are you going to bring into the new year? What are you not bringing into the new year? You know, and 
I was praying and I was like, God, I don't want to bring this into the new year. Mm. So I'm at the altar. We're having like a worship to bring in the new year at this moment. And um, I heard Holy Spirit say, well, if you don't want to bring it into the new year, then you need to go up to him and tell him that you're jealous of him. Mm. So I had a, a friend in ministry, you know, a, you know, you have you have people in ministry that you that you look up to that are in, in, in authority over you in the yeah. kingdom. Then you have people that you lead and disciple, but then you have the, the equals that that you run with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and this is one of those that was an equal to run with. And so to look him in the eye and to tell him that I was jealous of him, that was swallowing my pride. You Jesus. know, that was that was a lot of humbling myself, um, but the Holy Spirit directly told me, just go tell him you're jealous of him and that you um, are, you know, that you're sorry for everything and that wow. you, um, you're praying for him and just go pray for him and in and, 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 and all this. So I went right up to him. I just looked at him and said, hey, man, I said, I know this is, I don't want to bring this in the new year. And the Holy Spirit just showed me what my problem is. And I said, man, I'm jealous of you. And um, I said, you're anointed. You've got so much going for you. And, um, I just I love you to death, and and I just told him I said I'm jealous of you, and I and I and I apologize for that, and I've asked God to forgive me, and I'm asking you to forgive me. Wow! And man, he turned right back around and said the same thing to me, and then from that moment on, it was squashed. Wow! The tension was gone. So like comparing yourself to somebody else, there's a large percentage of that comes from when you're jealous of somebody. Wow! Um, so if you want to squash it, is just go up to them and tell them. You're jealous because it'll kill that spirit that's hiding. Yeah. And that was the tension in the room. It was a jealous spirit. And so when we confronted that spirit with humility, yeah. with the spirit of God, it pushed it out of our relationship. Man, I done completely forgot we was on a podcast. I'm sitting here <laughs> with my mouth dropped. <laughs> I'm like, yo, yes. like I'm eating right now. Um, yeah. because hey, that, Josh, that's I so see good. you on there. And I, I see Tyler on there. What's Come up, on. guys? Miss Tracy, it's going to be a good night, man. I love it. No, I mean, that that's exceptional. I, I would have never thought that jealousy... I see my brother to, Michael's watching as well. On, yeah, go ahead. On, Sorry. No, yeah. no, no. I just would never thought that jealousy would lead, would lead to uh, comparison, which is absolute. Which I think even another thing too that we can add in there is pride. Yeah, I think another yes. thing is pride. Yep. Um, which uh, of course is is uh, directly is cousins with jealousy. Yeah, I, oh, almost yeah. in Absolutely. a sense. Absolutely. Uh, because when we when we walk in pride, it, it allows us to almost puff up our chest and and to mm. not do things to not yeah. humble ourselves to oh, be yeah. able to do those things. Yeah. I was reading <clears throat> that scripture still one of the dopest scriptures that uh not only pride comes before the fall uh but god opposes those um who are proud mm. and i just always thought that that passage of scripture was a passage of scripture that was just like god uh being um like if we're acting prideful god would go sit on the bench <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah but instead what that scripture is saying in james is that if you're walking in pride mm. if you're walking in that kind of way then God takes off your jersey, puts the other team's jersey on, and opposes you. Mm. And I think when I started to think about it like that, it was like, man, <clears throat> I wonder how many battles are people fighting uh, all because God is really fighting them mm. and not just. And I think that's one of the things that comparison does is that it allows us to walk in pride. So I'm using that, bro. I'm just going to let on. you know right now. No, please um, do. That's that what is, this is all that about. Is one of, that, is, that is one of the best ways. Now, in your own life, yeah. um, even in that situation, so you overcame that. What are kind of your tips for other people if it's not just the jealousy factor, if it's just simply like I'm looking at myself and I think this person is great or I'm looking at my situation and this person. Is there any anything else that they can do? Let's say they're not jealous. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you, that you would say, hey, this is something else you could do for whatever reason I feel this and I just mm -hmm. I want to say this and I could be come wrong. On, come on. But I feel like it's something directed and I need to throw you an alley-oop towards worship. Okay. Uh, like, is there any connection to a, a part of our problems when it comes to comparison is that our eyes, I know you said this in the beginning, but our eyes are not fixated on Jesus, not just in the sense of focused on him, but in the sense of making him king or making him Lord over our lives mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of where it is no longer <clears throat> I'm looking at the next man and trying to uh, do what they do, but I'm, I'm looking to God not only as like a God that provides for me or will help me make it on top of this ladder, yeah. but a God that, that leads me, guides me, and maybe never even take me on the ladder that I would choose to go on. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think that you hit on some things there, man, and I'll just kind of break it down. 
I'll just talk, let the Holy Spirit lead. But I think that when you have your eyes on the Lord and you're not focused on where you want to go, but you're focused on where God wants to take you, you know what I'm saying? Like what plants he has for you. Um, it, when your eyes are on him, you're not comparing yourself to the world. You're not comparing yourself to, to, to those people around you because you're really, your eyes are on him. And the only thing that you're looking at and it is him and um, you're focused totally on him. And so when you're worshiping, when you're spending time in God's presence um, and that, that's one of the ways that comparison falls off is in the presence of God, all darkness must flee. And so the more you're in the presence of the Lord through worship, through reading your word, through just walking and talking with him, you begin to see the things that are wrong and off with you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, if the Bible tells you to evaluate your own hearts, you know, to, to see and, 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 and where where am I off? You know, and then you can tell in a relationship where it's off or where you're off. And wh- why should I be comparing myself to this world or anybody in this world? You know what I'm mm. saying? Like my, the way that I should be, the Bible says that I should want to become like Christ. And the only way for me to look like him is to look through the scripture, look through the Bible, look through the word of God and allow the word of God to continue to sharpen me and change me. And I think that's one of the mistakes that the bride of Christ in this moment is missing, that we have gotten away from allowing the Bible to change us. Mm. We read it because we're supposed to check it off of of a checklist. We read it to, to make ourselves feel good, but we don't, we no longer read it and allow it to change us. My God. Okay, so when you read the Word of God, you should go to it, first of all, to know the author, to know God. But when He speaks, you should have the respect and awe that this is the Word of God. Mm. And when it speaks to me and says, Brad, change this, I bow to the King and I say, yes, sir. Mm. The Bible says in Luke 6, 46, why, this is Jesus talking. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Mm. So when the Bible is speaking to me, the Word of God is speaking to me, and I just ignore it, man, I just slap the king in the face. Like, who are you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, But we've got to get back to allowing the Word of God to change us. Yeah. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, Brad, you're comparing yourself to this person. Your eyes are off track. Your your eyes aren't on me any longer. Then we, you know, the Holy Spirit will tell us that if we allow him to 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 um speak to us through the word. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. so I believe here in this last days, I believe we're in the last days. Oh, for sure. I believe in the last days we are going to see a um what do you want to call it? Um I don't know. You're going to see the bride of Christ, people in this in this world come back to starving for the word of God and allowing it to change them. Mm. Because that's where everything starts. There's yeah. got to be an authority and that authority that we live by is the word of God. And yeah. so that's the main way to to kill comparison is by the word of God. Yeah. And allowing the presence of the Lord to drive that out of us. Come on, man. No, you know? that's that's exceptional. I think that that's a lot of times the place that I'm in when I when I'm comparing myself and when I find myself not necessarily in sin but just like the little petty things in life is mm-hmm. all because I lack being in the presence of God. I mm-hmm. lack worshiping Him. I lack hearing His voice. Yep. I lack uh, being around Him. And and when you lack in those things, that's when this, all these things. I, I told somebody. Um, I said one of the things that I think that the enemy, the enemy is. I don't think is after your car, or your house, or anything like that. I think the enemy is after your time, so you don't spend time with the Lord. Yes. Um, because if you spend time with the Lord, you'll strengthen your relationship with Him, but you'll also have a greater focus on Him. And I think that uh, when you have that greater focus, it allows you not to compare. And so I think that that is exceptional. Spending time with the Lord admitting where you may be jealous and uh i think putting our eyes on him is the main thing that we should be doing when we talk about comparison you already know uh pastor brad father brad um (laughs) we not only talk about it but we pray about it and i think that there's going to be i think a a good amount of people a generous amount of people that 
uh, could say in their lives. For us, it might be ministry, but for other people, uh, it might be the cars that they drive or the house that they have or anything else, or their kids are not as great as somebody mm -hmm. else's kids. Like, I think a lot of us are on the uh, rabbit hole of comparison. Mm -hmm even when we think about our lives. And so uh, do, will you do me a favor and just pray for people? I will. I will be glad to pray. I want to say one more thing before I pray. Absolutely. Um, I feel like in my spirit I'm supposed to say this. But as I'm speaking this, if you have any prayer requests and you want to um, – just comment and let us know those prayer requests. We'll be praying for those here in just a moment. I see people on there. I see Christy Michelle, my brother Michael. I see um, uh, other people. Rodney Russell's watching. There's a lot of people watching out there tonight, and we just want to say thank you for watching. But if you do have any prayer requests, please let us know here in just a moment. We're going to be praying for those. But I really feel also um, that in the comparison thing on how to to help kill that and, and get rid of that and keeping your eyes on the Lord is that... When the God begins to speak to you, someone's going to speak to you for tonight, yeah. for a moment. Yeah. When God begins to speak to Ryan, and he says, all right, Ryan, this is what I've called you to do. This is what I want you to do. Um, and then you begin to run in that, walk in that, but then you get your eyes off of it for a moment on somebody else, comparing yourself or whatever. You stop shining the light that God's called you to shine brightly. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so have you ever seen the movie Coach Carter? You know, the basketball, the basketball movie? Yeah, yeah, oh, come for on, sure. For come sure. on, come on. It's one of my, one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, they're all in there. And, man, they're going back and forth to coach the whole game, the whole time, you yeah. know, and they're getting thrown off the team. One of the guys gets thrown off the team, but he's he comes back, and the coach is always hard on him. You yeah. know, he's like, hey, you know, you got to get your eyes on, on his studies, you know, yeah. and on getting your – he was trying to teach him how to become a man. You know, instead of just playing basketball, how to be a man, how to make sure you put your studies first. And um, and then – but this this kid comes in there having to do a test at the end to see if they could continue to play basketball. And the, the, he was already off the team. And mm. the coach was not expecting him to be in there. And he he's in there taking the test. He comes back on his own. And the coach walks in at the gym, and they're all in there taking the test. And, um, and he looks at him, and he's like – what are you doing here? Basically, you know, I'm just paraphrasing. And he, and that kid stands up. I love the clip. You got to go watch it. And he is, basically, he says that I've learned that I don't help anybody else out around me if I'm not living to my greatest potential. If I'm not letting my light shine to the greatest potential. Basically, he was saying that we are more scared of the brightness that we can become we're more we're more scared of the light that we are called to shine that the brightest that we can be we're more scared to become that person than we are to be the the, the darker side of ourselves the, the the easier side of ourselves you know mm. the, the side that um we, we're we're more scared to to shine for let's, let's take it to Christianity. We're more scared to shine for Christianity. We're more scared to let that anointing hit us and walk in it the way that God's called us to walk. We're, we're scared to, to walk into work with an anointing of God upon our lives. We'd rather just hit in the background and be a good person, laugh, cut up, throw some jokes. Everybody likes us. Mm. It, it's, it's like, he, and he was like, I don't do my community. I don't do my, um, his fellow people, his friends. He don't, I don't do them any kind of respect. I don't, I don't help them out any when I shrink back to myself and I don't live out the way that God's called me to live. And I believe in this last day, you're about to see people rise up. Romans 1 16 said, I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are on Jesus's team. We are his messengers. We are his witnesses witnesses of what he did for us mm. and it's time for us to rise up and shine unashamedly because when we shine unashamedly it begins to shine that light and it wakes up those people around us and that's what's needed is man if you're going to it'll easily break off comparison will be the smallest little spirit ever when you're walking brightly shining the light that God called you to shine mm. When you're walking in who God called Ryan Allen to be, you're not anywhere closely thinking about anywhere anybody else because you're you're being you. 
Today, Scotty Scheffler just won the Masters. He won a second green jacket. He won by like four or five strokes. Wow. He was so focused on what he was doing. He was not comparing himself to the guy that was playing golf right beside him. Wow. Even when he made a bad shot, he wasn't comparing himself to that guy who just made a good shot. He was focused on what he was called to do in the moment, getting his self out. When he hit a bad shot, he had to talk with his caddy, get it back and get back focused on the mission. Mm. So, Ryan, when you make a mistake and you fall and you down and we all sin, we all mess up, we just got to get back up, stay focused on what our um, commander in chief, Jesus Christ, has called us to do and shine the light that God's called us to shine. You yeah. have a great influence with the youth that you are leading at Rebirth, with the great ministry of Built for the Wild, man, that you've been going on for years, the so many, so much influence. But I want to speak into you tonight and I'm going to say this there is a level that you've never reached, yeah. there is a level that you can reach. But what happens is we get focused on other people, comparing ourselves to other ministries, other people, and um, we we get scared of what it may look like to shine the brightest that God's called us to shine. Mm. God's called you to shine even brighter. He's called you to be even more unashamed of the gospel of Jesus. And I believe in this last days you're about to see a line drawn in the sand where you're going to really see people who are unashamed for Christ, who stand up for him and say, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus, and I, this is the way I live. Yeah. Yes, I might make mistakes, but I get back up, I ask God to forgive me, and I keep going. Yeah. I believe to you, man, there is a light inside of you that that is brighter and it is yet to shine. Mm. And I believe here in this year you're going to be um, stepping into that if you allow it, if you don't hold back because of the the people around you. Mm. Sometimes we hold back because we don't want the others around us to feel like they're not doing anything. Mm. And that's the enemy holding you back. And that was that clip in Coach Carter. He's like, well, I've got to shine my brightest. Is it because these people around me, you know what I'm saying? We we hold ourselves back because we're afraid if if I shine bright, I'll make this person look dim. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And it's time for that over. That mentality's got to to go to the wayside. And I believe we're about to step into a season where they're going to be brothers and sisters of Christ who stand up and say, yes, I'm going to shine my light brighter than I've ever shined it. I'm going to spend more time in the presence of God, and we're going to watch Jesus do some amazing things here in this year. Come on, man. Let's talk about it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm full. I'm full. <laughs> I'm fired up, man. I'm about to flip this table. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it, man. No, I mean, that speaks volume to me, and I know that speaks volumes to other people because I mm. think it. We we are in a time where I think if there's ever been a time where God wants you to lift up his name the highest it would be now yeah I think in the state of our country in the state of just our world in general come on I think this is the time if anybody wanted a quote-unquote job for Jesus no matter yep. what you're doing this is this yep. would be your time to yep. shine the brightest absolutely and so I I think that's I think that's absolutely amazing, man. Like I said, I'm I'm full. I pray that you guys are full. I see that the chat is uh the chat is going up, man. And will you do me a favor? Yep. Uh, we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna pray about it. And I think that uh, just even where the Holy Spirit has led us to, um, is not only not comparing ourselves but being bold in what God has called us to do. Absolutely, man. And being bold in um what he's calling us to do and doing it uh, just unashamed. So unashamed of the gospel and unashamed of the way that we would do it. Yes. And unashamed of the way that God has called us to do it because mm. there's avenues for everybody because God does not speak one, lang one language or he does things one way. <laughs> it's different ways. So if you could pray for us tonight, yes. I think uh, I think that would be killer. I will definitely pray. And I do see we have a prayer request for Miss Tracy. So I'm going to be praying for her friend Sandy's back as well. Yes. Um, so let's pray. Absolutely. Father, in the name of Jesus, we yes. come to you, Lord, just thanking you for your presence. Most yes. of all, God, yes. we can feel you right here in the studio. Yes. I pray that your presence would go out through these airwaves and for all the people that are watching now and later, that they would feel your presence as they watch this video, God, as they watch this podcast, Lord, that they will feel your presence. Know that you are with them, God. And I pray for your presence, God, to just sweep in and that you would just push away all darkness that they'll be struggling with God, that your power, that your light would shine brighter than yes. any darkness, God, and push it away. I just call down peace over everybody that's watching right now. I just speak to all the wind and all the waves 
in everyone's yes. lives, God, that they that you would just um, I just speak to them. I, I just command those waves to be still. Yes. And I just believe the Prince of Peace is going to come walk into your life tonight, and you're going to really believe and see that he is he is alive and he is active and he is um, he is his eyes are on you. And so um, I just pray right now for Miss Tracy's friend Sandy who has chronic yes. back pain, Lord. Right now, I just yes. pray healing over yes. her right now in yes. Jesus' name. We release the power of the gospel, yes. the blood yes. of Jesus over her. Holy Spirit, we ask for you to heal her back right now yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. And then as her back begins to heal, God, I pray that she would have an encounter with you, knowing that you touched her and that she would grow closer to you, God, because we know that miracles are designed to draw people closer to you. You, God. Yes. So, Lord, I just pray that you would touch her in this way in Jesus' name. And I just pray for everybody out there, Father, who is having trouble comparing their lives to somebody else, mm. God. Comparing their lives to their friends, to their neighbors, um, to their co workers, God. I pray that their eyes would get off of other people, first of all. Their eyes would get off of their self, and God, their eyes would get on you, God, their author and perfecter of their faith, God, that, that mm -hmm. Lord, they would just stare into your eyes through your word, through worship, through prayer, through walking and talking with you, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would do something amazing in their lives tonight by helping them to re- understand what it means to reconnect with you, um, to get close to you, to spend yes. intimate time with you, God. And I just I just command the spirit of comparison to get off of people right now in Jesus' name. Yes. For those people that are struggling with a jealousy, God, that they would confess it to you and to others, God, and they'd be broken free of that in Jesus' name. God, we just, uh, we just call for revival and an awakening right yes. here in Birmingham, Alabama, yes, God, in this region, Father. We want it. We want to yes. see what only only you can do, God. And so we just ask that you would awaken the bride of Christ in this moment, in this region, and that we would get our eyes off of this world, off of other people, get the distractions out of our lives, and we would run after you with our whole heart, God. So we thank you for all that you've done tonight on this podcast. We thank you for what you're doing on Ryan's podcast and all the podcasts on BGTV, God. We thank you for what you are doing. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen, amen and amen. amen Family, we love you man Tonight was absolutely amazing episode Make sure and always remember uh, That uh, you always have prayer lines here man If you guys want to email us If you guys want to email uh, Email is about to pop up here in a second Make sure you email and let us know your prayer request We're going to pray for you here on this podcast But we always want to be praying for you throughout the week And so make sure you tune in And uh, you, you send emails and do whatever you need to do Also if you have any testimonies or anything like that, let us know. Family, we love you. We talked about it. Comparison, we talked about it. Next week is going to be something else. We're always going to tune in. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. I think tonight was absolutely amazing. I think that the Lord is delivering people even now as we speak, and I know God's going to continue to speak. So family, I love you. We'll see you next week. I hope the week goes well. Peace out.